All right, so I'm going to do a tutorial of that part that you sent over. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is just come in here to Geomagic for SolidWorks, create a part. And then we'll come over to Geomagic for SolidWorks, hit import, and come over to that scan that you had. Hit open. And first thing I'm going to do is just check the size of the scan because it looks like it's 168 megs ish um, so what I'm gonna do is uh, in order to know how many triangles are in an object inside of Geomagic for SolidWorks it's a little bit weird unfortunately you click on the the object and you hit edit feature and you can see this is uh, 3.4 million triangles which for a part like this is a little high, like I don't have to have that much resolution. And Geomagic for SolidWorks will perform a little bit better if I just reduce it down a little bit. So I'm gonna do like 30%. Now, what this is gonna do, simplify is gonna decimate the number of triangles. And then this slider here, it's in the way right now, but this slider right here is curvature it's going to reduce more in the large flat areas so that way your accuracy really isn't going to be affected that much but yet the the scan will be like 30 percent of what it was at the beginning and again the software will be a little more snappy there are times where i need to keep all that data and work with it um, but on an object like this i usually go ahead and just drop it down to something that's a little more manageable So once that's done, I always like to expand this view over here so I can quickly turn things on and off. When I'm reverse engineering, I have to turn things on and off like nonstop. So I like to use this over here to, to do that. So what I'm going to do is align this first to the world coordinate system. And that'll make the design portion significantly easier. Um, so in order to do that, what I'll do is... Uh, I'll go ahead and create a symmetry plane down the middle. This isn't a symmetrical part, but many times symmetry plane is able to work this right here because there's enough symmetry data and then when it removes outliers that this gets ignored anyway. So the way symmetry plane works is I come in and I just draw a line on screen just generally where uh, the plane of symmetry might be. You don't want it to be exact because if it's a little off center, it's good. It actually helps it find the center easier. So there we calculated a symmetry plane. So that's down the middle. Um, the next step is we will just place a plane. It looks like it sits like this arc is kind of parallelish to this right here. So I was thinking about putting a plane in here. Now I'm just going to extract a reference plane. This reference plane is going to, because it's got all these dimples on here, I'm just going to come in and select some random areas staying away from the fillet and holding shift to do that. I don't need that many, but just spread it out over here and then hit OK. So you'll see that we best fit to that data there. So you'll notice that I did a plane down the middle. I did a flat plane. Now I need to uh, do a plane in this direction. And what I'm thinking about doing is creating an average plane between these two because neither one of these two are vertical. There's a uh, draft to them. So come over to extract reference plane here and click on that surface and create a plane and then click on this surface over here. Hopefully I'll get it. Yeah. And then I'm just going to create an average plane between those two with the regular SolidWorks tools. So if I just come over to reference plane and 
All right, so it's just off screen because it's way up here uh, because of the way it just previews it. So there's my <laughs> center plan there. I switch around between different CAD packages quite a bit, so sometimes little quirks of the different CAD packages will throw me a little bit. Now, now it's time to align it. I created that construction geometry because I want to align the scan to the CAD coordinate system. If I come over to Geomagic for SolidWorks, I'm going to go ahead and hit save. I always do this because it's software. All right, so save that. Now, in the Geomagic for SolidWorks tab, you have this Orient Mesh tool. And the way it really wants to work is I like to establish, create a center point from the geometry that I build. And then I use the planes to align the different axes from there. Um, so what I'll do is uh, let's take this, this guy and that guy and come over to create a axis. So I'm going to intersect both of those planes to create an axis. And then I'll take that axis and the plane that went off screen and create a point. So now I created an origin for this part, but I haven't moved it yet. And it's also good to save the part before you move it because once you orient the mesh, you can't undo the movement of the mesh so I always save it right before I do my alignment um, and that way if I need to go back and move it to the other location then it's very easy just to go back to that position so let's go ahead and align this mesh to the world coordinate system so now you see that I have a point an origin to use so I always go again it's just save before you do an alignment okay so i always save before i do a orient mesh because that tool has no undo to it so once i move it the reference features stay where they are and the scan moves um, so if i want to do it i have to fit all the geometry again and i move it again it's just one of those limitations of the tools inside of solidworks our other products don't work that way um, but this one it just that's kind of one of those things where we're working with the solidworks rules inside of their environment here so so now i'm going to come into orient mesh um, the way this works is this is the origin and then these are the axes uh, the directions of rotation so I click on the point and then from there I can select which which degrees of freedom that I want to align with what so I want the x-axis to square with this center line plane because usually my symmetry plane is one of the most accurate um, uh, features that I've created and then in this instance I'm going to use the y-axis as that plane that we created there and then you can see that the y is flipped so if I want to hit this and flip-flop the direction I can do so and then hit OK so you'll notice the scan moved but all of the geometry all this geometry stays put um, so you can always just come in and add it into a folder and it's telling me it can't so not a big deal I'll just turn these guys off for now and then once I turn on my coordinate system you'll see that it's squared up to the world CAD coordinate system and then if I just look at it from the top and what's really most important is just looking at it from the side here just to make sure it's squared up the way I want it to be so now that we got it aligned this is where we can talk about how to uh, model this part um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to model this pretty fast. So I might not model it as accurate as I want to, um, but what I'll do is just kind of quickly go through the bare bones of the approach I would take. Um, our guys internally would model this two different ways. I know there's kind of two camps. 
there are some of our guys that will use surface modeling, like I'm going to show today. And then some of the guys will actually use uh, solid modeling to block it out and then just delete a face to create a surface or shell it from there, um, which I could always make another video later to show that method. But today I wanted to use the surface method. Um, so what I'm going to do is go ahead and save again. I always kind of revision my uh, reverse engineering products project. So I might just come in and say, okay, this is the modeling stage after I've aligned it and everything. And then every once in a while, I'll rev up my part just to make sure I save some of the history. Uh, maybe I need to take a step back or whatever, or have a backup of the part. So you'll notice I'll do that. And you don't have to, it just sometimes has saved me. So I'm going to model this portion, this outer area first. And I'm just going to do it all in one surface extrude from the side. Now, in order to do that, I'm going to select this plane here. And I'm going to cut a cross section through the part. So when I click a cross section, you'll see it's offset right now because the last time I used it, I offset it. If I just hit zero, it'll just cut right through the middle of the part there. And if I hit OK, um, and now I'm going to maximize my surface bodies over here and then use that to hide the, the mesh. So the mesh shows up in the tree here and up here like any other surface. Um, but for some reason, the hide and show works here. So it's just a kind of a quirk of the software. Um, so what I'm going to do is when I cut that mesh sketch through the part I actually just leave it as its own mesh sketch and then I come right back into the same plane and I make another sketch and uh, so that's a just one of those things that I like to do it that way not everybody has to do it that way um, and what I'm gonna do is this front face to me looks like it's not a uh, extrusion from the side it looks like it's bowed like it's a lofted surface so what I'm gonna do is ignore that part of it right now and I'm gonna rough in these this area here so because that's got those bumps here I'm just gonna reverse engineer to the bottom of those bumps and obviously this will take a second so I might just pause it and let, let you see the final. All right, so there's what I end up with. I drew all of that. And I left the fillets out for now. Um, there are some projects I like to add the fillets as 3D features in. Some of them I like to use as um, in the sketch. In this instance, I'm going to en enter them in as a 3D feature just because I know that there's going to be different blends from different angles here. Um, so I, you'll see what I mean here in a minute. So if I come over to surfaces, extrude this guy, mid-plane. Make sure we go far enough for trimming purposes. Now, for this face, what I would do is cut multiple cross sections and loft it. That's the way I would go about doing it. But just for the sake of speed today, what I'm going to do is just kind of show an interesting tool that we have here inside of uh, Geomagic for SolidWorks. So this face right here, I'm going to use uh, Extract Freeform. And I'll just give it a second to calculate. Um, and then I can give it an enlargement value. So it'll extend it past. And I can do a surface extend. And in this instance, what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit with my manual selection. If you right click, you have the tools to be able to change which tool that you want to use. And I'm going to hold control and remove a little bit from that fillet and let it 
fit and I'm because I believe it's encroaching on that fillet that we're going to do later. So I'll go ahead and I'll just go ahead and increase that enlargement to the max and then I'll have to do a surface extend as well. And again, this way is nice because it's fast, but it's not going to be uh, perfectly symmetrical unless I trim it down the middle and then put it back together. But it's not going to be a super accurate. It's going to be accurate to the surface, but it's not going to be an idealized version, right? So we come over to surfaces and come over to extend. We'll just try to extend those both at the same time. And then we'll do the top and bottom separately. I know you can do them all at once, but I wanted to do them at slightly different. And let's do this because it's this is where I talk about hiding and showing stuff all the time. It's just a little easier to hide and show things. So in this instance, maybe it is easier to uh, extend them all at the same time, right? So now that they fully intersect each other. Um, so what I normally would do, again, just to speed this process up, is I would do, these look like extrusions as well on each side. Um, so I would do an extrude surface just like I did here on both sides. But again, for the sake of speed, I'm coming over here and I'm going to use extract because we have all these different tools where you can extract a free form like I just did. I can also extract a plane. So I'm going to do that. And if I hold shift, I can add to a selection here and tell it to go ahead and extract a plane and then I'll extend the enlargement with planes, you can go really far because, again, it's flat. It's not considering curvature or anything. So you'll see that it fit a plane to that side. Now, in order to do the other side, I can fit a plane over there, or I could just use the SolidWorks features and mirror something. And I'll just mirror that to the other side. using this. So now that we have all the side surfaces fit, we'll go ahead and extract that top surface that you were asking about. Finally, we're getting to that. Um, so now I'll go back over to that right plane again and insert a sketch on it. And I'm going to go ahead and use the same sketch that I had before, right? And go normal too. This guy. And um, it looked like it was dome to me. You can make it obviously whatever you want it to be. Um, to me, it looked like it was a domed surface where you could use some sort of a constant radius arc like this to come across that top uh, and you can adjust the, the radius of it um, so that to me is what it looked like let me just go ahead and extend that out actually I'll extend it this way This is my old school way of extending surfaces. I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. I'm extending sketches. All right, so I'm just going to make the assumption that that top is a uh, one constant radius. And then I'll come back over, extrude, grab this. Go back to mid plane like we did before. Now we have that top, which it looks like eh, it's not too bad. 
All right. Now, this is the other little wrinkle in here in the trick is come over to the top plane. Now, when we come over to this top plane, inside of Geomagic for SolidWorks, we don't have a tool that can extract a sketch from a 3D boundary like that. Um, we have those types of tools in some of our other products. Um, so in this product, what we're going to end up doing is manually drawing the outside boundary. Um, so the way I would go about doing that is, um, let me just go ahead and hide that sketch. And uh, so I like to start, I don't want to do more work than I have to. So I'm going to do a center line. We're going to mirror this stuff. And the way I go about it is I'll draw a line here because as I was looking at this when I first got the data, it doesn't look like it's, um, you know, four straight sides. It looks like this has some sort of bend to it, like a constant radius, or you can do a spline. That's actually what I was thinking about doing is doing a spline. You can do a couple things. You could, you know, draw a constant radius. That's one option. And the reason why I did this guy over here, and I'll convert it to construction, is because when you mirror something, I always want to try to maintain tangency. So I always draw a reference tangency object there to go off of. And we'll do the same thing here. So we'll build that. And there are different methods to doing this. There are some users that have some cool shortcuts. Um, the way I'm doing it, again, is just based on my experience. And then I also use quite a few different CAD packages out there. So sometimes I'm not as well versed. I don't remember all the exact tips and tricks for it. So when I use a constant radius, you see that it's a little bit different. So in this instance, I could go ahead and use a spline to show that process. But what I was saying is, um, you know, I might not be as well versed in the daily SolidWorks tips and tricks that they have in their package. So if it's a varying, uh, a varying uh, radii, then I'll I'll do something like that, and then just like we did before, um, shift select those, add tangency to make sure. So we have that and then on this side here I thought it was a constant radius we'll try it huh, what happened there I don't know what's going on. Why did it do that to me? Let's do this then. I'll just create out in space and move it into position. Maybe a spline would have been faster this way. Actually, let's do that. Let's just go ahead and do a spline because it'll be faster than screwing around with that. Um, with splines, I tend to also overdraw them as well. And when you're doing lots of surface modeling, get used to using lots of splines, just because when you do crazy lofts and stuff, obviously, that's something you're going to end up doing quite a bit of. All right, so now go ahead and trim everything. Corner trim these guys. 
And I'm going to add constant radius to these guys, the fillets. Oops. And then drag this guy over. Looks like they're different. So I'll just clear that second one. So let's make that first one that radius, and then we'll make the second one a, set, a different. And again, um, to accommodate for that, I can, you know, adjust my, you know, if I want to redraw it or, you know, there's a variety of different methods because that's not one constant radius. Or I could even get fancy and do a spline between the two. But for what we're doing today, I'm just going to keep it at a constant radius and go from there. And then now we'll go ahead and mirror those entities. So there's my there's my sketch. So now that we're out of that, we'll go ahead and extrude it. So now we've created all of our construction entities to go ahead and start trimming this together. So you can see everything we got. So now comes time for the surface trimming stage. Now, in theory, it is possible to trim all of this stuff at one time, but it is a pain to try to do something like that. So the important thing is, is trying to trim things in stages and trim them together and make sure they work. Um, so we'll go ahead and hide some stuff. Get rid of all this. And we'll work on that, just that trough. There, those pieces. So different CAD packages have different trimming tools. And um, some of them will do something along this line. One thing that's cool about SolidWorks is under trim surface, it has the ability to do a standard surface trim where you just trim one thing to another thing and that's it. Um, but you can end up doing lots of trims if you do it that way. Um, in this instance, um, you can do a trim mutual. Now trim mutuals can get really crazy and they can fail and you have to try to troubleshoot why they don't exactly work. Um, so trim mutual, I try to bite off a small piece and trim those things that I almost definitely know that they'll trim together and then kind of stack trim mutuals together. So the way this works is you select everything that you want to trim select all those pieces and then in this instance select all the surfaces that you want to keep um, so you click on what you want to keep and then as you select those surfaces they will disappear and this is the part that can get a little bit confusing you just have to make sure that you select the right surfaces that you want to keep and make sure that they intersect properly to create the part. So as you can see that they all trim together to create this bucket. All right, so now that I have this surface, so now that I have this trough, I'll go ahead and take that top surface And we'll do a trim mutual between these two. So come over to surface, trim surface, select both the things that I want to trim. Say I want to keep the bottom and the outside. So now I have those two. At this point, I think I can go ahead and throw in the fillet. And we'll go ahead Let's turn that surface on first so I can see what radius I want to throw on there. Okay. 
and looks like half an inch is going to work. So I'll go ahead and throw that on all four of these. And hit OK. And then last but not least, we'll turn on this guy, this outer shape, and we'll do another trim mutual between these. And again, you can combine some of these steps. This is just trying to keep it simple because, again, it can get really crazy. And then it kept that tool. So if I just turn off this and turn that on, you'll see that there's my piece. And then this is where you can add in the other fillets from there. So if I come in and we'll just change that to Actually, before I do that, let's just add that last little piece in. We've done most of this. This guy, um, we can extract that pretty quick um, by using this uh, tool over here, Extrusion Wizard. So I can click on these surfaces. And, you know, I can cut a cross section and draw it like I normally would. But in this instance, what I'm going to do is select all that geometry and then switch over to manual and hold shift and add to it. And then over here in the options, I'm telling it I want to make a surface. So I can click on that, give me a surface. And then down here at the bottom on the curve options, I can tell it not to close it. So I just want to open surface drawn for me. And then you can tell it to extend past in this direction and pass in that direction. Come on. There we go. And then when I hit OK. So again, this is just an easy method that I'm using. And then we'll hide that. And then we'll trim that in the same way we trimmed everything else in. Oops, I hit extend. So we'll trim. So now they're all trimmed together. Now this is where you would apply your fillets. And then point out one, two, five. You just come back and add them in the a good logical order, providing they all work. Fillets are finicky sometimes, right? Okay, so there you modeled it as a, we modeled that as a surface, and I missed a fillet, so if I just double click on that. Okay, I'm just used to our software, I can double click on it and edit it real fast. There we go. And if you wanted to thicken it, um, you can do so now where you come over to uh, features and where'd my thicken go? That's probably under surfaces. Flip the direction. if that's what you need to do to it. Um, so that's how I would do, those are the tools and how they work inside of Geomagic for SolidWorks. I hope this helps.